Taiwan's outgoing Vice President William Lai will be inaugurated as the island's next leader in about two hours from now. He takes over from current President Tsai Ing-wen. Now, the sh shift in the power comes amid increasing diplomatic and military pressures from China, which claims a self-ruled island as part of its territory. Well, still senior officials say Mr. Lai will pledge to maintain the status quo with China during his inauguration speech. They say he will express goodwill towards Beijing and call for both sides to pursue peace. Well, for more analysis, let's speak with Raymond Kuo. He's director of the Taiwan Policy Initiative and senior political scientist at the RAND Corporation. Hi, good morning, Raymond. Thanks very much for joining us uh, today. I want to start by asking you, how different is William Lai going to be from his predecessor? Is he going to be, you know, charting a different course or is he basically going to be Tsai version 2.0? Well, good morning and thank you for having me. Uh, I think he's going to be Tsai version 2.0. I mean, during the election campaign, pretty much every single presidential candidate said that they would follow Tsai Ing-wen's foreign policy, especially uh, her approach to cross-strait relations and relations between the United States and Taiwan. Um, I think it's widely seen as a responsible and pragmatic approach to cross-strait relations. And so, especially under William Lai, who's you know, served with uh, um, uh, outgoing President Tsai Ing-wen for four years, we should expect more of the same. On top of that, I see in the video here, you've got Shelby came there as well, who was the uh, Taiwanese ambassador to the United States and had, was a very, is widely recognized as being a very steady hand in guiding and managing that relationship. So I would imagine that at least the next four years for Taiwanese foreign policy are going to seem to be very much similar to the previous four years or eight years. Raymond, ahead of the inauguration, we've seen China sending sort of mixed messages to Ireland, you know, keeping up the military pressure, but at the same time, is signaling sort of goodwill through easing of tourism and imports curves. What is Beijing's sort of carrot and stick approach trying to achieve here? And will it hold for managing relations with Taiwan under Mr. Lai? Possibly. I mean, I think the election results were kind of tricky for Beijing, uh, both positive in the sense that the DPP lost its legislative majority and that the KMT has gained that legislative majority, but they're still dealing with the DPP government in the executive branch. And so they're having to uh, thread a very thin needle here. On the one hand, they do want to say to the DPP, you know, if you decide to declare independence, if you do things that cross our lines, we will respond with military force. But the more they do that, the more they undermine the political stature of, say, the KNT. And so for China, they're trying to do this sort of carrot and stick approach. On the one hand, uh, trying to reach out to the KNT. On the other hand, trying to undermine the support of the DPP. Uh, speaking of continuity of policies, as you mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Lai has indicated that he would build on predecessor Tsai Ing-wen's uh, new southbound policy, right, which is aimed at diversifying its economic engagements away from China. But what sort of obstacles and opportunities do you think lie ahead? And what should Mr. Lai do to ensure the sort of resilience and success of this grand strategy? Sure, that's a great question. I mean, I think um, the new southbound strategy has definitely paid dividends for Taiwanese in terms of diversifying their economic trading partners. But it has progressed a little more slowly than it, uh, than I think people had hoped. At the same time, right now, Taiwan is negotiating with the United States on a 21st century economic trade agreement. And so the combination of those two things, uh, outbound towards uh, Southeast Asia and also with the United States, I think the combination of those two will truly diversify Taiwanese, the Taiwanese economy away from China. Um, insofar as you know, say the United States and China are sort of de-linking from each other or de-risking from each other. This actually presents an opportunity for the Taiwanese uh, economy to globalize more. Uh, they're investing more in Southeast Asia, but also with Mexico and, of course, the United States. Raymond, on the defense side, Tsai spent the last eight years rebuilding the island's military. And the DPP, you know, is suggesting mm -hmm. it's hoping to further build on that with U.S. support, of course. It wants to form alliances with neighbors, South Korea, Japan, the Philippines, down to Australia as well. Do you get a sense that these countries are, are now more receptive given current circumstances? Yes, although I think there are limits to how far they're willing to go. So um, there is, I think, general interest within the region, also in, in say, Central and Eastern Europe, in engaging more with Taiwan, um, certainly diplomatically and politically, uh, economically as well.
But I think there is a pretty hard limit at uh, direct military cooperation. Right now, only the United States is really in a, in a strategic and security position to be able to provide that sort of assistance to Taiwan without uh, unacceptable blowback from the Chinese. And so uh, what I would expect to see between Taiwanese relations with like, Japan or South Korea is continuing economic and political engagement, maybe some work on, say, humanitarian assistance, uh, <clears throat> response to natural disasters, uh, but not the same sort of close mili or closer military to military relationship we see right now between Taiwan and the United States. And Raymond, uh, we are expecting the U.S. delegation to attend today's inauguration, which will happen in a few hours' time. But what does this say about its ties with Taiwan, keeping in mind that Washington has you know, repeatedly assured China that doesn't support Taiwan's independence? Sure. I think if you look at the delegation that the United States is sending as it's part of its official delegation to the inauguration, I'm going to paraphrase a Taiwanese professor. I fortunately forget his name. He kept saying it was all chin, 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 which just means it's all formers. It's all former officials. It's former uh, heads of AIT. Um, it is very much in keeping with the U.S.'s overall approach to Taiwan, which is to keep things on the track 1.5, track 2 diplomacy. Um, it's not meant to rock the boat. It's meant to uh, convey, I think, to the Chinese a certain steadiness of purpose by the by the United States. That yes, we are the U people in the United States are increasing their ties, uh, security, political, economic with Taiwan, but we don't want the cross strait relations to get to such a point that an open conflict will burst out. So, for example, we're uh, the U.S. is not sending currently sitting uh, cabinet members nor uh, uh, people representing Congress currently. All right, understood. Raymond, we do have to leave it there. Thanks so much for your time and your insights this morning. Raymond Kuo is director of the Taiwan Policy Initiative and senior political scientist at the RAND Corporation.